Hi, welcome to another edition of the Alan Rosenberg Show. Uh, I wasn't planning on doing another video so quick, but uh, yesterday I did that Endless Wire Who album, Treasure or Trash, and today I got in the mood to listen to an album, and I was like, man, this album is perfect for Treasure or Trash. And that's a series, as you know, where I talk about albums that are pretty much universally despised. The critics hated it, the fans mostly hate it, and uh, it's always looked at a weak point in an artist's career, and I like to talk about those albums and reassess them. So, today we're talking about Jethro Tull, and probably the album that lands at the bottom of every Jethro Tull fan's list of favorite albums, uh, Jethro Tull Under Wraps. Now, in actual fact, and it's playing back there, about a year ago I did a ranking of their 22 studio albums. This album did not finish last uh, it was actually 19 of number 22, so if you're interested, you can check that video out. It's pretty good. Uh, I'm a big Toll fan, got all their albums multiple times. But anyway, let's talk about Under Wraps, which actually came out in 1984. Did okay in the UK. Uh, it did uh, hit number uh, 18, but in the United States, it was a dismal failure. Uh, it hit like number 76 in the United States Billboard album charts. The original album, and there is the hype sticker from the original album, had 11 new Jethro Tull songs featuring Lap of Luxury and Heat. Uh, then I got it on CD. This is the original version on CD. And it's got 15 songs. So when they put it out on CD, it had an extra four songs. It's better. It's a better listen with the 11. <laughs> but let's talk about, uh, let's lead up to it. So... 77, 78, 79, prime Jethro Tull for me. That's really my favorite period of Tull's 77, Songs from the Wood, my favorite album. 78, Heavy Horses, another incredible album. And 79, the last of what's often called the trilogy, and that's uh, Stormwatch, another excellent album. This was a, a grower on me. Uh, I love this album now. Then, that was 79. 1980, Ian Anderson decides he's going to go do a solo record. He's going to call it... A for Anderson. The record label says, no, we, we don't want you to do it as a solo album. They release it as a Jethro Tull album, A. And the reason why he wanted to do a solo album on this was because it was completely different than all the other Tull albums. I mean, coming after Stormwatch and Heavy Horses and Songs from the Wood, you couldn't be much different. And this has a mixture of that synth, synth kind of, you know, electronic kind of a sound. But he mixes it really well on this album. It's a, it's a, it's a different Jethro Tull album. It's a different Jethro Tull band because it was supposed to be solo. But it works good. Um, I like it. Had that great video, too, uh, that uh, they did Slipstream. So let's go. Uh, two years later, they release Broadsword and the Beast, which is actually coming out in a mega super deluxe. There's some videos out there I saw because I can't wait to get this deluxe uh, box set. But this is even a stronger record. Uh, again, another mixture of, um, you know, synth and rock and flute. And it's like a only better, I think. Uh, Pussy Willow's on here. And he there's a ton of bonus tracks on this. And the bonus tracks are amazing. You listen to those bonus tracks and you're like, why weren't on, they on the album? They're so damn good. And a better question is, why aren't they on this album on the raps? Because this album that we're going to be talking about came out in 1984. And by the way, uh, when Ian Anderson and Toll toured for that, this is a, uh, an official album that came out on the Under Wraps tour, live at H Hammersmith. That's the tour that he permanently damaged his voice. Uh, he damaged it. The doctor said, cancel the tour. He's a worker. Anderson says, I can't do that. And he wound up having surgery. And we're all paying the price, especially Ian, all these years later. His voice was never the same. Anyway, there's your history of Under Wraps. So let's get into this album. Uh, the CD has got 15 songs on it. One thing about this album, now I'm a drummer. And this is the only Jethro Tull album that literally has no drumming. All the drums on it, and all the songs have drums on it, but it's those electronic program drums. Uh, I believe Ian Anderson um, programmed them, and I imagine he probably had help with his partner on this album, which is Peter John Vitesse. Now, he helped do the Ian Anden solo album, which led the way to Under Wraps. So this album was Ian Anderson's first solo album, came out the year before in 1983. Uh, 
I could have done a video on this because I expected Ian Anderson's solo to be acoustic, which would have been beautiful, and he later on did that solo. But on that, it is highly electronic, and it's the forerunner of this album. All right, so now you have the whole history. This album is written mostly with Peter John uh, Vitesse. So it's another, uh, not only is it the only Tull album with no drama, but it's co-written. Uh, which is really unusual. So song one starts off with Lap of Luxury. That was the single. Um, that's a song that I always say could have been a great, great song. I really like that song, but just not this recording, not on this album. You know, it doesn't have drums. It's got a good groove. It's got some good guitar uh, with all the synth accents. But, you know, like anybody would tell you, when you, you go into the chorus, you need that crash cymbal, you know, you got your drum fills and the crash cymbal doesn't exist there's no drums on this album it's just synthetic so it's like flat you never hit a peak where you hit that crash and it takes you to the chorus it's just not there um there's a potential for a great song or a really good song but it's not this but even so it's still a, a okay song it's fine that goes into under wraps number one which again is a it's a driving synth rocker, and I'm going to be repeating myself because all the songs on this album are synth. All those 80s synth sounds that sound so dated, and they sounded dated even then, in my opinion. But it's got a good chorus, uh, underwrapped, and it got me underwraps. Good catchy chorus. You know, it's a good song for what it is. Um, we'll get back to this. The third uh, song, European Legacy. Man... To me, that is a lost Jethro Tull classic. It's the best song on this album. It's actually a really good song, even the way it is. Even with all of this kind of synth stuff, you know, it starts with a flute. And it's so nice to hear flute because it's very sporadic on this album. But the flute pops out on European Legacy. And then it goes into a really great acoustic guitar riff that Ian's playing. And that's just classic Tull. It just sounds so good. So you got Ian on acoustic singing. Is this a bass drum? Uh, it's like a toe tapper. It gets you going. European legacy. Really good melody. That is a great, great song. It's even a great song on this album. Um, although everything could be a lot better if it was a band with a drummer. But we'll get back to that. Number four, later that same evening. Same kind of situation. A really good song. This one's more dark. It's more... Moodier. I could actually hear it, you know, if it was organic and real instruments could have been on Stormwatch. Um, yeah, but um, later that same evening, it's got this stop and go. It's kind of this moody sound. Uh, at the end, it's got like an acoustic, uh, you know, it fades out with some nice bass. Uh, it's a good, cool, dark kind of a song. We want you back later that same evening. It's a good track. The first four songs really strong. Even on this album, the way they are, they're still strong. After that, it gets kind of yucky for me. Saboteur, Saboteur is next. That kind of tells you what this whole album is about. Um, and it starts with a really good sharp guitar stabbing kind of riffs. Uh, that really could have been something. But the whole song is like this jerky, out of rhythm, like, like as a drummer you, i couldn't play it it's it's just it's not in a groove it just it it has really rough timing and uh at the end it ends with this faux double bass it's just a messy kind of track that i don't really care for what's next uh radio free moscow yep that's the next one and it's okay it's like a slight kind of a song uh it doesn't really do much on this album i do like that it has some DJ kind of sounds, you know, for that Radio Free Moscow. But overall, it's just kind of a weak song. Next song is Astronomy, one, four minutes and eight seconds. And again, it's a decent song, but it's just buried. There's a good song in it that's buried with this overwhelming heavy synth and just a very dated sound, you know. Like I said, it, it was sounded dated even then. Even when this album came out and a lot of 80s albums, I was like, don't anybody realize that this stuff is going to be horribly dated? And it was. Uh, his vocals are really good on this album, though. Uh, the, you know, he had his voice at that time. What's next? Tundra. Same kind of a story. It's like a synth rocker. It's, to me, it's just like tall by numbers. And without that organic 
toll band playing, it just kind of sits there. Nobody's car, well, that's a weird one. It's also, I got that push pull, the stop and go. Uh, nobody's car, dun, 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 dun. it's really quirky, quirky kind of a Jethro Tull song. But um, it's got a synth jam at one point, which could be interesting, but because it's all synth, it, it just doesn't really go anywhere. Heat is next. Um, that uh, really, it opens up with a really beautiful melodic flute. Almost sounds like violins at one point, which I'm sure he's doing on the synth, but it sounds really good. There's a couple of crisp guitar licks from Martin Barr. I, I think it's from Martin Barr. Um, but again, Heat, like uh, those other songs, it's like messy. It just sounds jerky. It just doesn't, it's not smooth. It's like too much synth pulling it all over the place. Um, now you get to a highlight. Under Wraps number two, you will finally have organic music. There is the acoustic version of the title track, and you, it's nice because you get the third, the second song was the synth rocker version of it. Now you have the acoustic version, and obviously the acoustic version is so much better. <clears throat> it's a really good song. Paparazzi comes next. Same old story. Another generic synth rocker. Um, a couple of acoustic guitar licks in there, flourishes, but which boosted up a little bit. But like everything else on that sound, they, you know, there's a good song buried in there. It just needs to be re-recorded. Apogee. Um, another one, jerky, stop and go, stop and start. Um, I don't know. It's got some tasty electric guitar work, which I'm assuming is from Martin Barr. And it's got some good bass on there, a little bit of good bass. Um, yeah, it's got some tasty guitar work from the electric guitar and bass. But overall, Apogee doesn't really do much. And then you got these two other songs which weren't on the vinyl. Automotive Engineering and General Crossing, same kind of thing. Uh, a mix of pop. I mean, Automotive Engineering is like a pop song. But it's so popish, and with all of this electronic 80s sound, it just sounds like lame 80s pop music, doesn't really do much. And General Crossing, by this time you're exhausted from all of this synth rock, and it's just okay. So there is my song by song of under wraps. The bottom line is, and if any album in Toll Catalog, this album needs to be redone. And I know that somebody had said to Ian Anderson, hey, you know, with all these box sets you've been doing, and I showed them all in another video, I have them all, and Broadsword and the Beast is next, you should do under wraps. And Ian Anderson's like, well, we didn't have much left over, you know, because Broadsword and the Beast got a ton of extras. This album didn't. And what I think you, he should do is re-release this as a double CD. You know, you could remaster the original version again. But have it re-recorded at the least with a real drama. And somebody said that to him, and he's like, it's too expensive. And I don't get it, because I had seen a YouTube video of somebody, a drummer, who's an amateur drummer, but he's fantastic. He's playing along live to the Under Wraps album. The guy put a massive amount of time on it. And the album took off. Just with this amateur drummer playing the drums live, took on a whole nother level. So put a real drummer on this album, do some remixing, you know, make it a little bit more real and not so synth, you know, a little bit more organic. And this album could work. On this album, there are some really good songs, the first four songs especially. Check out European Legacy, that's classic tall right there. And the acoustic version, and even the uh, synth version of Under Wraps is real good. So... Is it treasure or is it trash? Well, if you're not a Jethro Tull fan, it is definitely trash. If you don't like Tull or you never heard Tull, this is the last Tull album I would ever have you listen to because you would never listen to them again. But if you're a Tull fan or a Tull freak like me, well, it's not trash because you need everything. And one of the great things about Tull is that they do all kinds of music, so you can never get bored with them. Depending on your mood, you could put on a Tull album. And I guess if you're ever in the root for shitty 80s synth rock, well, here's your toll for that. But no, it's not an album that I like. So uh, if you're not a fan, it's totally trash. If you are a fan, it's kind of trash, but there's some gold buried in there. In fact, Martin Barr has been quoted as saying, if it's not his favorite toll album, it's one of his favorite toll albums, which is really odd, because I don't hear that much Martin Barr on there, but that's just me. 
What do you think about Jethro Tull and Under Wraps from 1984? Is it treasure or is it trash? Do you love it? Let me know what you think. As always, I really appreciate you watching my channel. Hit subscribe. Check out my other videos. Tell your friends. Help my channel to grow. Uh, there's a lot of good content. There is playlists on there. You can check out artist discographies. And there's a bunch of just Jethro Tull albums. And I'm showing the Jethro Tull studio, 22 studio albums on that video. Thanks for watching. Uh, have a good rest of the weekend. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And I'll see you next time on the Alan Rosenberg Show.